So if you've been watching this channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Wireless Go. It's been my to-go traveling microphone system for quite a while now. But there was a few things that kind of irked me and Rode has not just fixed those, but they've gone above and beyond with features I didn't even see coming. So let's look at this right now. So full disclosure, Rode did send this to me. However, they didn't say I had to do a review or anything like that. It just arrived in the mail in a mystery box. So why don't we just hit the highlights right now and then we're gonna dig into each one of these in detail. Battery life, seven hours on the transmitter or the receiver. It takes two hours to fully charge it. Um, onboard recording, we've got the option to use these just as a single unit or we can use the two units to do, you know, mic two people at the same time for interviews, talent, different things like that. Um, we've got the app which unlocks other features such as onboard recording, the fact that I can plug this into a computer, a camera, uh, a mobile device. So the big highlight of course is that now we have one receiver and two transmitters. So that's been a big thing because in the past you could only connect one transmitter and one receiver at a time. Uh, they came out for splitter cables, you could actually set up two systems at once, but now uh, you can just set up the one receiver on the camera and in the two transmitters. The great thing about this is it's fantastic for interviews. But if you look at this unit, it's very small, lightweight, has a built-in battery which lasts seven hours, but it has a built-in microphone. So you can just attach it to your clothing and you can just talk to it, you know, and I won't go through all that again because I did that in my previous review, which I'll link you guys to. You can also connect um, the microphone. So Rode actually has a lav mic that you can just plug in here and you can attach it to your belt, use it as a belt pack on a lav mic and not just the Rode one, but it's a standard jack. So, you know, pretty much any microphone is gonna work on there. Well, there's another accessory, which is really great for things like shows is this um, little mount. So you can actually mount it in here. And I love this. Um, you attach the windsock on the top and even if you got a flag, something like this. So I can be doing interviews uh, using this at a trade show or whatever. But the nice thing about having two transmitters is now I can attach one transmitter to me, one transmitter to somebody else and we could do an interview that way. Or if we've got a group, the main speakers or the moderators could have these and you could pass a microphone around and that works great. And a good thing about it now having dual channel uh, wireless is that either these mics can work in mono, that means that all of them just kind of come through the same feed or they can be split into stereo channels where you have one transmitter on the left channel and one on the right channel, which is really good if you have somebody that maybe has a louder voice than somebody else, then that way you can use the left and right channels, you can balance the audio, and then you know keep it as stereo or just mix it down to mono, which is probably what most people would do. Another fun thing about this though, is if you wanna record with it in stereo, you could have the mics here or you could separate them um, so you know if you're recording some music or something like that, you're at a show, you could separate these and get a nice wide stereo, stereo spectrum. So you could try, you know, just spreading it that way or bringing them apart and uh, you, could, you could use it that way as well. Another big highlight is redundancy. Have you ever got something and it's too hot, you record a signal and it's just clipping and there's nothing you can really do in post-production to fix it because it's distorted. It's like a photograph that's blown out. Well, you can actually record a safety channel now because using the two channels, you can have one at the regular and then you can have the other one working at minus 20 dB, which records it at a lower level. So if the main one's clipped, you've got a backup. And if that's not enough as far as a backup, you can actually have onboard recording. These have four gigabytes worth of storage on each of the transmitters and you can have these recording the whole time. So if you forget to hit the record button or you lose your wireless signal, you've got a copy right on here. And so when you open the box, you get the case. And I like the fact that this case is nice and big. And in the box is also three dead cats. Not cats as in meow but that's what they call windsocks, furry windsocks are known as dead cats. So we've got three of these, uh, which is great. So that gives you an extra. Now, one of my big irks on the first version was trying to get that on. It was this thing you had to just kind of, uh, now it has a locking system. If you look on here, you can see two little dots and then twist. 
and it locks on look at that that is not coming off it's locked on super easy to get it on there and it's going to stay on which is really nice now if you're recording outdoors and using this internal microphone the microphone sounds really good but if you've got any wind you're going to get that you know that kind of noise you get and then by doing that Put the windsock on completely eliminates it i've tested it um tested it in a convertible with the roof down works great okay so if we just push it and turn it to take it off nice and simple and if you happen to break one you've got a spare you've got three then on here we've got usb-c so we've got three cables and they plug into the usb-c and then it has the uh, older type USB on there, so you can plug these into your existing power bricks because we all know we've got lots of power bricks working on those other ones. And of course, it comes with one other cable, which is this one. And this is what we use to connect to our camera. So to connect to the camera, you just simply plug this into the audio out, plug this into the microphone jack, slide this into the cold shoe mount, good to go. The SC15 here is a USB-C to USB-C, which is great. That means we can connect any of these units. And if your computer happens to have USB-C, just attach it that way. And the other thing is we have a additional cable, the SC16. So you can plug this into your receiver, plug it into an iPhone. And yes, you can use your wireless system on your mobile device. It works on both iOS and Android. Now you have the ability to do muting. So either from your transmitter, you can mute. All you need to do is just tap the on off button just once and that will mute, tap again, and it will unmute. As simple as that. How do you know if it's muted or not? Well, if you look onto the receiver, you can actually see that it's muted. The other way you can do is you can mute from the receiver. If you want to mute from the receiver, you simply click on the left button to select. So you can just click once, it'll select mic one or click again, mic two, click again and it's off when that mic is selected if you push the right button down just tap that that will mute that microphone all right let's have a look at using road central which is the software companion software that works with the go to so i have downloaded it from the road website i'll give you guys a link down there and uh, let's get started so the first thing we want to do is let's start with the receiver so we're just going to plug in the USB-C to the receiver, make sure it clicks or snaps in there, and then we're gonna plug it into the MacBook Pro. And I'm using an M1, so you can see it works on the M1. Then when we go in here, you're gonna see some settings here. This is where we can go in and we can change some of these additional settings. Now, some of these, for example, like backlight, we can turn that on and off from the unit. Same with the modes. But let's have a look at gain control. And if we click on here, it goes from course which is the three stage tap on there now it changes to the 10 stage which gives us fine tuning and that will actually appear that way on the unit too so we're literally setting it up telling it what we want it to do so you can set up some other options in here we can go in here we can reset the clock so it actually syncs with the time that we're on here right now and of course the first time when you plug this in if there's a firmware update it's going to show and we can update the firmware so essentially that's what we can do in here. So we've got all that kind of turned on. Now, if you want to use the safety channel, what you need to do is you need to change that to a merged mode. So you can't be in a split mode and then you can turn on that safety channel. What it does is it gives us two channels of audio. It gives us the regular audio and then it records the other track at minus 20 dB. So that means if this is too hot and it starts clipping, which is the worst thing that can happen in audio because you can't get that out. You've got a quieter version, so you can switch to that, and that's what the safety channel's for. And then once you've changed everything inside Road Central, all you need to do is just unplug. And at this point, we can take it away, and the settings are now programmed into here. So plugging in the transmitter, let's have a look and see what we get. And this is going to pop up. You'll notice on the left, we've got recordings that we've done. And you can see it tells us whether these are compressed or uncompressed. You can see these are all recorded uncompressed. We can click on them and play them if we want. And uh, I'm just scrubbing through it. And if there's any dropouts, they'll appear red. I bet you'll see some dropouts on this one. There we go. So this is when we were doing the range test. You can see the dropouts start to show in red. So you can quickly and easily find those. And if we want to export that, we just simply choose export. 
and then we can choose the settings. I'm going to call this a um, uh, test. We're going to call it range test. And we're going to do one because this is transmitter number one. Well, at least we're going to call it one now. And we're going to do UC for uncompressed audio. All right. And now we can choose how do we want to export this as an MP3 or as a wave. And you can see we've got some pretty high specs here that we're able to do. And most of these specs are going to be higher than what we're going to need. And now it's going to export that audio. All right, let's have a look at the settings. So if we tap on this little gear, it'll show us the settings. And we can see we've got the record turned on. If we tap here, it will turn it off. And if we turn it on, it's going to show red in the receiver. Whenever we connect it, we can see our battery level right there. And we can also turn on the mute lock. So if we don't want to accidentally mute it, we can do that there. And then, of course, we can look at the audio here. And this is where we change it between compressed and uncompressed. And if we look at the second one, there's the recordings. And this is the onboard recording here. And if we go here, we're going to see the dropouts. Now, these are not dropped out on this recording. These are actually going to be captured. These are dropped out from the transmitter to the receiver. And by the way, it mounts on the desktop as a disk. So I can look at the information here and I can see how much space. And you can see we've got about four gigabytes worth of space on there. And we can see we're using standard quality compressed audio on this one. So we could compare the compressed with the uncompressed. And let's have a listen to that. And um, how does that sound, guys? Compressed audio? And uh, this would be the uncompressed audio. What does that sound like? So here's the compressed audio. This is the stuff we can get more than 40 hours worth of content on here. Now, my question is, do you think that the compressed audio sounds really bad? I haven't heard it yet, but my guess is, you know, for things just like vocal, just for speech, um, my guess is it's probably not going to be that bad if we're even going to notice a big difference at all. And of course, another great thing about being able to connect to the computer is if you use the USB-C, plug it into the side rather than the mic out, plug this into your computer, you can use this as a USB microphone. And that way you can use it for podcasting, Zoom calls, voiceovers, all that kind of fun stuff. And you don't have to have a separate preamp and microphone system. You can just use this. Okay, here's a little trick that I'm doing. Because I've got two transmitters and I'm not doing an interview, what I've done is I've attached one on each side. I'm using them with uh, lav mics plugged in. So this means that as I turn around, I can do a complete 360. And technically, one of these is always going to be line of sight. It probably won't matter when I'm up close, but when I get further away, even though we have audio recording as a backup, I'm curious to see how this works. So um, let's find out. All right, guys, let's do the range test right now. So I'm walking. I'm going to turn around and I'm just going to walk away. This is the width of several football fields. Definitely longer than the length of a football field. And I'm just going to keep going and we will see. So right now the camera that we're using on this is a Sony A7S III. All right, that's a long, long, long way away. I can't imagine ever needing to be <laughs> further than this or even this far away from my source. All right, so I'm back and uh, that's essentially the range test. But what I'm doing right now is I'm talking in the handheld mic. I'm gonna bring it closer to my mouth right now. And uh, right now we're testing to see how the audio quality is on the original. I'm talking to you guys on the Rode Wireless Go 2. I'm not sure if there's going to be any different in sound quality, but we'll see in a second there. Um, I don't really expect a big difference because the sound quality was already good. Um, for me, I'm 100% on board. I'll give this two thumbs up. What do you guys think? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments underneath what you think about this and what's your favorite new feature that they've added to this. And also, if you're new to Photoshop Cafe, welcome. So glad to have you here. Consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.